Larry Sorensen on the other end of our AT&T line. Good morning, Pitch. Michael Patrick, good morning, and not in the caliber of Dick Enberg, but certainly a wonderful gentleman. It was, it's been, it was a thrill of my life to meet him. Let's not forget Tom Gage either, the terrific writer from the Detroit News, who was inducted into the Hall of Fame also, one of the great, great baseball writers of uh, my generation and my era, along with John Lowe from the Free Press, uh, yeah. two guys that really were, were guys that when you came to the city of Detroit, you knew that what you said was going to be reported accurately and honestly. And uh, congratulations to all those guys. What a great honor. Good. I was going to just ask if either of them gave you any trouble, but it sounds like you were okay. <laughs> How about Smoltz? Uh, that was a pretty classy speech, and it was nice of him to give the shout-outs to Lansing and, and to the Tigers, too. Well, he is very, very true to his roots. He gave the uh, first pitch speech at the Wake Forest University first pitch dinner this spring in January and a lot of what he said in the Hall of Fame speech he talked about down here and he started off talking about Alan Trammell we had the opportunity to spend an hour or so together before the banquet and he talked about Alan Trammell setting the tone for his career and how he wanted to approach other players that were coming through it and, and he obviously held true to those beliefs and it, it set the stage for him so I thought that was a wonderful wonderful touching moment and he talked a lot about uh, about his history in Lansing. Three phone calls, he said, changed his life. The first phone call when he got the news that the Detroit Tigers had drafted him. The second phone call was when the Detroit Tigers called him to say they traded him. And the third phone call was from the Hall of Fame. And he said those three phone calls kind of defined his life. Wow. Um, I, I love talking to you. I'm fearful we're not going to be talking into October. Well, it's not looking good right now. Four games back in the wild card, and, you know, it's the buy-sell dilemma that's going on. It's curious to me. I wonder what people would be seeing because we're looking at how far the Tigers are behind Kansas City. And yet four games out of making the wild card to me is significant because that's the way the game's played today. And I go no further than looking at the NCAA champion, Virginia, who in the ACC conference this year was 15-15. and 15. They finished seven games behind the leader of their division, Miami, and yet they won the national championship over 300 other college baseball teams. <laughs> so once you get in, you never know what's going to happen. Don't and you give get up in. But if you give up on the season now because you're four back, uh, that's throwing in the towel to me. Don't do it, says Larry Sorensen. We'll keep in touch anyway. Thank you very much. <laughs>